Well, good morning. Thank you for attending the fourth webinar in our series on Extranet Security Optimization with Premier Point Solutions. In this series, we plan to take about 25 minutes to show you some features that will help you secure your SharePoint Extranet. Today's presentation will probably run about 15 minutes and then have some time for some Q&A afterwards. Uh, I'm Jonathan Horton, a support engineer at Premier Point Solutions. And I'll be your presenter today as we focus on learning how we can secure site collections. Now, when we see this question, the first thing that probably comes to mind is security groups. However, today we're going to dig a bit deeper and take a look at another threat to the integrity of your SharePoint farm. Today we're going to take a look at how to keep your customer or vendor's information secure. Uh, now, we're not talking about the files that are being shared, but rather your customer's personal information. There may be a sneaky hack that could be going on under your nose if you're not careful. So let's take a look at a few uh, ways you can uh, help secure your XNet by looking at your site, your site collections. So today's webinar, we're going to show you how to secure your SharePoint Extranet against threats after uh, your people have access to the site collection and how using Extranet Collaboration Manager can make securing those threats easier. So SharePoint plus EXM is a perfect combination to secure your Extranet. First, we're going to take a look at the scenario of using one site collection with multiple subsites for each of your customers and vendors. Uh, a lot of the customers we work with, uh, they do have it set up this way. Uh, this can be a little bit of a challenge, and we'll dig more into that as, uh, as we get started. Next, we're going to take a look at using separate site collections for each uh, of your customer, vendor, or Extranet encounter. Uh, I will say that of all of our clients that we have, this is probably the most common way. And then lastly, we'll take a look at host name site collections, and there are pros and cons of using them. Uh, just an FYI, most people do not use host name site collections, and we'll talk more about that. So one site collection with many subsites. Uh, if you only use SharePoint internally, uh, using one site collection with many subsites may work for your organization. But when it comes to using SharePoint as an extranet, you're going to want to rethink this scenario. Uh, besides the extra workload it will take to ensure your permissions are set correctly, you have to worry about a new threat that you did not have to consider when you were only working with internal customers. What's that new threat? Cue the scary music. The people picker. Um, so the people picker. It even has a scary name like, like a monster from a 1970s horror film or something. It's the people picker. Um, so why is the people picker a threat to your extranet security? Uh, well, if you want internal users to see both internal, which is your Active Directory, and external forms-based users, both Windows authentication and forms-based authentication must be enabled on your web application zone. That also means that if your external users have access to the people picker, for instance, if they can create a SharePoint task or share off a document, uh, they will be able to see both Windows and FBA users. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, in this image, you can see that whenever we're using the people picker uh, and we're searching for Bobby, uh, the display is both an internal user of Bobby Jones and the external user of Bobby at acme.com. So your people picker can inadvertently be giving away information that we do not want it to give away. Uh, so let's say, for example, you have an external user that is using the people picker and they type in uh, another name and all of a sudden you're another external client that you did not want the first client to, to know about is showing up in your people picker. Well, that can be dangerous. Uh, can you imagine if like a, a law firm or maybe it was a health organization uh, and this kind of information were to get out? So you can see how uh, you want to make sure that you're protecting the users of your extranet by filtering this people picker. Um, so what we need to do is in show in SharePoint, you can apply a people picker. Uh, there are a filter for a people picker. Uh, Microsoft has filters that can be applied to the people picker so that only the desired information will be returned. Uh, in the image you see here, I've highlighted that the two that I think will be mostly used by you and your organization in an extranet environment. Uh, looking at that picture, can anyone guess why we suggest you not use one site collection with different subsites for your extranet? Oh, I forgot, this is a one-way conversation. Um, so the way I'll look at here is, if you look at the picture, it says that only search within site collection. Well, if you have one site collection with many subsites, then even if you apply this people picker filter, 
you're still going to see other users inside of other site collections. Um, so let's just take a little quick look and kind of see if I can dive in and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you a uh, site collection with a subsite called Vendor C. Uh, and in this subsite, I'm under the peoples and groups. You can see that Jess at Adams.com, which is an external user, has been added as a members, and there's no other members inside these groups. So that if I go out to um, the site and log in as Jess, um, we'll show you what that will look like. So let's just go ahead and we'll log in as Jess to this Vendor C site. I'm going to start an in-private browser so there's no cache cookies or anything. And you see I'm presented with the uh, option to log in with the forms authentication. And we'll just log in Jess at Adams.com and a password. So again, this is a site collection with a subsite of Vendor C. If I go out here and click on this business plan, and let's just say I'm going to share it, this will bring up a people picker for me to type in a user that I'm going to share with. And then I'll go ahead and let's just type in, i start typing in a name. And when I do, you'll notice that these are both internal users, Brenda Mason, Brent Dixon. Those are users in my AD. And um, so, and they were, did not have any permissions to the site. So again, the people picker, whenever I start to use the people picker, even as an external vendor, uh, whenever I start typing in, it's actually doing a search over every possible um, database that it has, so both AD and foreign space. You can see this would be uh, less than desirable. So if I go out, and uh, let's say, you know, I thought this was great, but now I found out about this people picker. If I went to apply that, uh, I got a list here of some uh, PowerShell commands that we could run. But again, I look and see this PowerShell, this people picker filter will only filter f within a site collection. So since this is a subsite, that's really not going to help us out. So let's just take a look then at a site collection. So I've got a different one here. Let's just go ahead and close this out and then let's just take a look at an extranet so now we're going to switch over to a, a web app that has uh, individual site collections using the managed path vendors uh, and right now we're on the acme site but this is just showing you so this is our extranet account users these are users that have uh, forms based authentication you see jess is a part of our extranet users here and we're just going to go out to um, another site collection it's going to be our C vendor or cornerstone and then as an administrator you know of course you know we, we can see I'll, I'll go ahead and show you if I were to share uh, I'm just going to show you that this site collection has the same issue at first so if I go out here and just type in BRE and of course you'll see those people are still available there which we would expect as an admin user and as um, until we add apply the filter It'll be the same for your form based user. So what can we do? So now we know we're working in a site collection. We can apply those filters so that we can filter out that people who do not already have access to the site collection uh, will not show up in these people picker filters. All right, so how does that work? Well, we're just going to go ahead and open up a command window. And then I've got a, like I said, a, a, a document out here that I can go, I keep this so that I can apply these people picker filters. Um, I don't do this very often, so this file might be hidden somewhere. I might have to go ahead and find it again. But uh, what I would do is, I know I've got to change the directory, so I'll go ahead and copy this line of code. Now, if you were doing this uh, in, in your environment, uh, you may not keep up with this, you know, this file or something. You may have to search it on the internet again. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll change the directory. And the next thing we want to do is we actually want to, to check and see if the property actually exists. You know, does this filter actually exist out there and is it turned on? Uh, so this PowerShell command here, customized with my URL already. I'll go ahead and copy that in. We'll just paste that here. And then we'll run it. 
Now again, this is not applying the filter. This is check, just checking to see if the filter exists and if it does exist, if it is turned on. All right, and the value says yes, the property does exist, but no, it is not turned on, which we already pretty much knew that because whenever we typed in the name, we saw people that were not already having access to the site collection. So what should we do? Well, we could go ahead and copy over these different um, PowerShell commands to filter out the people picker, uh, which is perfectly okay. But as you see, you know, copying and pasting and keeping up with this file, that might be a little bit of a headache. So something that EXCM or XNet Collaboration Manager has done is we've actually built this in for you. So let's say you do want to apply that filter to this site collection. Uh, all we're going to do is we're going to actually go out here to the general application settings. And under the general application settings, XNet Collaboration Manager has a uh, menu set up with wizards and other things that you can do for multi-factor authentication. But the one we're specifically interested in is this people picker restrictions. So all I do is simply click on people picker restrictions. Come out here, choose my web application. And then I can choose. So the people editor and the people in group search. So those two different PowerShell commands that I was showing you, this is what those each one of those do. So I can actually just click the checkbox and then run, hit the OK button. So again, no having to keep up with uh, PowerShell commands, no having to search the internet if I forgot them and how to apply them. All right, so now that we've applied those to our extranet, let's go ahead and go back out there. And we're just going to log in as our external user. Again, opening up an in private window. And then again, logging in as our external user. And we want to sign in. So now let's do the same thing. We'll click on this filter here. Going to bring up a people picker. And then we'll just do the same thing. And as you see, there's no results found. Um, so uh, now the filter has been applied, and it, uh, you can see the filter is, is not showing the results. Um, and then let's say later on down the road, you decide, you know what, let's, let's go ahead and take that back off. All right, just reverse the process. So instead of having to find the PowerShell in which it states that you have to, you know, how to um, retract these, you just simply come out here, uncheck them, press the OK button. And once you get the green bar, you should know that, that the filter has been either applied or, in this case, removed. Um, and let's just see if I go back. And let's just log out again. And we'll close that out. Let's start a new improper browser. I wonder if I have that still pasted here. Yes. Uh, this would be a good time to let you know if you do have uh, questions, feel free to go ahead and uh, open up the questions in the um, dialog box and go ahead and enter those in throughout the, uh, web, the, the presentation. Uh, so it was Jess. Oops, wrong password. As if we don't have enough passwords to keep up with. And then let's go back out here again. Well, I don't have the share button now. There it is. And then just show you what we got here. So was it BRE? All right, so now that you can see the filter has been removed, and Brenda or is uh, Jess is now able to see those users. So, again, um, ways that you can add the people people, people picker filter is to um, go out there and use the PowerShell, or with our product using the XCM, you can actually just go through the user interface, click a few buttons, and apply a filter. But now, even though um, 
the filter can be applied uh, to the site collection. Uh, there are still some other threats that are out there that are uh, known for just using a single site collection or for each individual uh, extranet user. So the next thing we'll probably we'll want to talk about is your um, host name site collections. So first thing we want to say is use host name site collections. Uh, even though this is recommended by Microsoft and we recommend it as well, uh, we will say a lot of people still are not using host name site collections. Uh, host name site collections can save you a lot as far as security and peace of mind. So what are host name site collections? Well, to answer that, let's you know, look back at that uh, typical SharePoint environment. We just saw you know, two vendors that we were working with. Uh, let's say it was vendor A and vendor B. Uh, typically, you'll create a SharePoint web application, and it contains many path-based site collections. That's what we were looking at here. that share the same host name or DNS name. For example, vendor A has a site collection at managed path vendors forward slash vendor A. And then vendor B has a site collection at a managed path vendors forward slash vendor B. Uh, these are referred to as path-based site collections. And these work for most corporate scenarios. Um, but again, if you use host name site collections, host name site collections enable you to assign a unique DNS name to a site collection. For example, uh, you can address them as uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash vendor A dot premier point solutions dot com. And then you can also do the same thing with like vendor B dot .com. So there's no managed path uh, it gets in the way there. And this also enables um, you to scale to many customers. Uh, but you still may be asking, you know, why would I want to set up a host name site collection? Well, um, if you want to ensure that your clients never learn about other clients you have, host name site collections are the best way to go when securing your site collections. Uh, there are some pros and cons for host name site collections. Uh, Microsoft does recommend using them over path-based site collections, uh, as this is you know, most closely mimics Office 365, which of course is what all the focus is on for the Microsoft developers. So everything that's being developed at Microsoft is being developed first for Office 365, uh, and when they're developing, they're developing with host name site collections in mind. So uh, if you have a uh, growth mindset, uh, designing host name site collections can kind of help you grow that route. Also, when you use host name site collections, each site collection in a web app is assigned a unique DNS name. Uh, so when you deploy many host name site collections to a single web application, you actually increase the scalability of the farm because resources are not used to support multiple app pools and web applications. Uh, how are host name site collections have the challenges as well? For one, you cannot simply create a new host name site collection from central admin. You must use PowerShell to create them. On this slide, you see the PowerShell that creates a host name site collection. Uh, that has a URL of webapp.contoso.com, and the uh, URL uh, for the web app is webapp.contoso.com. Also, if you enable host name site collections, then you will not be enable, able to enable self-service site creation for your users uh, unless you have a, a third-party program. Like uh, for us, we have a ChangeBot software that allows you to uh, to allow self-service site creation. So there are many pros and cons to each scenario that um, you need to weigh out for yourself as to which one is better for you. Uh, hopefully this uh, brief webinar was able to give you some useful information, kind of get you started on the path of securing your extranet site collections. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to go ahead and uh, enter those now. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to answer those. I know, like I said, it was pretty quick. That's a lot of uh, technical information, uh, but we will have this video posted, um, and uh, you be, will be able to review it as well. You can always reach out to us, um, um, you know, Jonathan at PremierPointSolutions.com. Um, also, want to let you know that we do have some uh, future webinars that are coming up. Uh, so, if you wanted to, if you like this one, want to know a little bit more, um, please uh, join us for future webinars. And then, um, so we want to say uh, thank you if you're, uh, we'll answer those questions now. So if you have questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter them in. I'll leave this contact screen up so that you can contact us if you have additional questions that you don't really want to ask while on the webinar.